Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so that you know when we go live. And if you like the content, hit the like button and give us a thumbs up. All right, let's see who's on the stream. I know they're all happy because, you know, we got basically long AF yesterday. Okay, flipped burger, bazooka bill, right on. JoJo, always explicit, Oregon in the house. Aiken with notorious love, welcome. Carlos, hello. Okay, we have Belgian, London, Mexico, right? All right. We have JoJo wants a bell ring. There's a bell ring for JoJo. Okay. Wagawan, East Tennessee, Lone, Lawn Sharp. Okay. Thailand, no doubt up late. All right. Stryker says, I'm not giving up on oil, gold, and crypto. Am I crazy? No, sir, you are not. We are going to cover that today. Oh my God, the UPS truck guy is in Florida. Oh, that's got to be hot. Switzerland, Chicago, Singapore, our friends in Belgium, Okinawa, Japan, Brooklyn in the house, Estonia is here, Germany, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we, we nailed a bottom together using the DeMarc work. Okay. <laughs> you know, some guy said he, he was kind of giving me a hard time. He was, he was like, you know, all these charts kind of look the same. So I got off the stream and I was like, yeah, he's right. They all kind of look the same. They were all stupid bullish. Right. And then I went on Twitter right last night and I, I tweeted out. I remember last year at Bitcoin Miami, Mike Novogratz came on the stage and said, if you're not long, you're short. I put the tweet out. Benjamin Graham actually has a joke about this. He's like, you know what? I never get a tweet that's like super bullish right before it goes. And I actually got a tweet. And I think that's thanks to that person who said all the charts are the same. They are. They were all 13 bottles, right? All right. So let's have Steve wants to know if it's time to go long DeFi. Let's talk about that. Uncle Sam coming down with regulations. Okay. So we've got Kentucky, Hong Kong up late. Welcome. Cincinnati, welcome to the show. I want to begin by just saying something simple. When we look on YouTube, we see consistently that there are 4,800 people who like our work. Okay. And I want to thank every single one of those 4,800 people. Thank you for watching our work. Stay tuned right here, because as you can tell, we're getting smarter, stronger, faster, quicker, okay, and sharper, and most, most importantly, hopefully for you, more profitable, not investment advice. So thank you, hats off, stay tuned right here. Now, with that said, let's get to your market update. A new monetary order. There is a report going out from Credit Suisse. That's a big Swiss bank that you pretty much need a master's degree in finance from an Ivy League school to fully understand. Okay. At the end, he draws attention to his report by saying something positive about Bitcoin. But the conclusion is 
we have entered a new monetary order, right? First, I told you to watch the ruble. Then we talked about the Polish currency, okay? And fiat could be effed. It could be effed. And Bitcoin may be waking up because over, say, the next five to six days, we may trade this idea of a new monetary order where big cap crypto, Bitcoin, and select altcoins, okay, not shit coins, select altcoins could do well. So let's get into it. First of all, tokenmetrics.com for Women's History Month has got a 10% off coupon lifetime. That means if you sign up now with the coupon WIC10, that's for women in crypto, WIC10, you will get 10% off for life if you don't cancel, right? I will show you later why there is a compelling value proposition to get busy with token metrics. Because as I said yesterday, you may get more, you may make all the money from a token metric subscription, right? In the next two days or three days, that might pay for the whole subscription for a year. All right. So we'll get into that. Now, let's talk about you're like, what's a new monetary order? Like, don't we have a new monetary, you know, hasn't the old monetary order been in effect forever? No, it hasn't. Okay. This is a graph of the dollar index. Okay. From one of our research reports released back in October. Okay. And now, as you can see, the dollar index you know, has been in a range between 80 and 160. So there have been agreements between governments, right? That's kind of how things used to work way back in the day, right? Back when I was in third grade, right? People would say, okay, you know, we want the dollar to go up or we want the dollar to go down. And central banks would make these big pronouncements and the market would move. That's the way it was with Bretton Woods and the Plaza Accord. They are most famous historically because, you know, that's kind of when, you know, the value of the yen and all of these really important changes in fiat occurred. Then the chart also, you know, shows other events like the dot-com crisis, the great financial crisis, the start of QE, and the response to COVID-19. So there's all these things that have happened to change how fiat works, Right back in the day, they had a little bit more integrity. These days, we know it's the printing press. Now, I'm here to tell you that Bitcoin up 10% on March 9th could be a signal that we are going to trade a new monetary order. Now, what's a new monetary order? Okay, it means that the way the world uses the dollar may be changing. Now, I got this book called Putin's Playbook. It's written by an analyst from the U.S. intelligence community. Now, being that I'm an analyst, I like to read work and I respect the work of other analysts. So I think when you watch U.S. TV, right, right-wing news channels are, are criticizing the president. Left-wing news channels are showing women and children in the Ukraine, I'm sorry, in Ukraine, crying, right, and the distress, which makes people angry. But this analyst after she gets done with a little comparison of capitalism and socialism, dives really deep into Mr. Putin's background, how he thinks, his training and experiences as an intelligence officer. Let me just tell you this point blank. One, get the book. Get the book. Two, Mr. Putin is not going to stop whatever he's doing. If anything, the United States and the West may have walked into a trap because even though there's huge sanctions on Russia, he's just created this rapid incentive for Russia to de-dollarize, right? Meaning he's created this huge incentive. His country has got to get off the dollar. We kicked him out. And he's like, great. I want it out anyway. So that was the start of a new monetary order. Now, what was the next piece to drop? Well, we talked about this. The Polish currency fell out of bed. Like, wait a minute, isn't Poland a NATO country? Yeah, it is, right? They quote the Polish currency versus the Swiss franc and it fell out of bed. Now it's bouncing, that's good. 
right? But whatever happened when it went down, the central bank couldn't stop it. Okay, now I don't know why the Polish currency went down. And I don't think we care today. We don't care. The bottom line is there's a problem with fiat. Okay, the dollar index, right? The dollar's great. The dollar's safe. The dollar's everything, right? Hmm, maybe not. This Credit Suisse report really calls into play. It's like, hey, could the dollar be kind of, kind of screwed by all this, right? All this stuff that's going on with commodities and macro environment. So I look at the dollar chart. I'm like, all right, well, you know, if the dollar index holds 97.80, maybe the dollar goes back up to 101. But if the dollar index falls below 97.80, right? That means you've got the Russian currency in trouble, the Polish currency in trouble. Okay. The Euro may be in trouble. The dollar may be in trouble. You get in the pattern here, a new monetary order. So if all these currencies could be in trouble in one form or another, right? And we don't know what the deal is with the dollar yet, but listen, you imagine like who out there in the world, who in crypto is saying, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. The dollar's fucked. Excuse me. Who's saying that? Nobody. And what do we love to do on this show? Talk about stuff that no one's talking about. Okay. Now let's go to some interesting statistical trivia items. So as you know, wheat has gone up. Ukraine and Russia account for a huge portion of the wheat supply for the world. So that's probably cut off. So wheat moved. Nickel had some sort of bizarre short squeeze that may have hurt the exchange because they can't get the money from winners to losers because the short sellers went bust. Nickel hasn't traded on the LME for two days. Okay. Now you're like, Bill, why are you telling me about this? All right. Hang on. Gold, teacup and handle, right? We've been talking about this. Teacup and handle at the top of the range. Handle's really annoying. What happens if gold starts moving in the thousand dollar increments? Don't think it can happen? Ask a nickel trader. <laughs> Ask a wheat trader, right? What happens if gold explodes? Well, let me tell you what happens. From a token metrics report released in October, okay, on a price level basis, Bitcoin and ETH are strongly correlated. That means they tend to move together. So this work was done before commodities went crazy, and that's actually useful. Bitcoin and ETH move with, move together. So soybeans, gold, corn, copper, wheat, and nickel. Okay. That means if nickel and wheat and gold go up, guess where Bitcoin's going? Up. Okay. Now check this out. ETH and Bitcoin are negatively correlated with oil. Okay. That's the last line. BTC is negatively correlated with oil, natural gas. So doesn't it make sense, right? Oil was mooning. Bitcoin was subdued. Oil topped. Now Bitcoin is doing a huge catch-up rally to wheat, nickel, corn, gold, etc. Can you imagine where Bitcoin could go if gold moons? I mean, gold bugs will tell you over and over and over again that there is weirdness in that market where, I don't know, physical gold is, it, gold is worth a lot more than what the paper market says it is. Let's put it that way. So gold could do what nickel could do. And if gold does that, what's good? What's going to happen with Bitcoin? <laughs> right? It's crazy. Now, continuing on this idea of gold, again, WIC 10 gets you access right with that medium with that medium plan that's $100 a month to our indices okay and right now the all exchange index so the index picks out coins right every day that could go up a lot right now sometimes it moves to cash this time i'm seeing tether gold pax gold right luna kyber okay so this thing has got like a 40% allocation to gold so if gold goes, Bitcoin follows. And then Luna and Kyber have been going up for a while. 
So again, that's why the coupon and the index is on there, right? KuCoin, KuCoin, sorry. Okay, a, a favorite of our quant team, this index has been able to find a lot of like smaller altcoins that have done well, Waves, okay, Kyber, notice the 20% allocation to gold. Sometimes RAI, RAI will, will move with momentum plays and sometimes RAI can pick up on these consolidation phases like teacup and handle, okay? If you got to make money in crypto now and you do, so not investment advice, but obviously the uptrend is now your friend. So if you're not doing token metrics now, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so here's oil. Oil is topping out at 135. Now, the risk to the bull tarred view is that oil takes out 135, right? If there's another shoe that drops, you know, Venezuela or Saudi Arabia cut production, or we're not smart enough to open up the Keystone pipeline, you know, we always want to be balanced. I know in crypto, everyone wants absolutism. I like to put the risk to the view. The risk to the bullish view in crypto is that oil goes above 130. Now let's talk about Elliott Wave. Let's renew where we were yesterday. Okay, Bitcoin can go to either 42, 47, or 52. Okay, Bitcoin is in the middle of what we would call a C wave, right? It's been correcting, going sideways. It's annoying, right? But we're thinking that there's going to be a big rally, okay, that may suck people in, all right? Now, I don't mean that in a negative way. Obviously, if we're in rally mode, you got to take advantage of that. Okay. Now, I don't, I'm not buying Bitcoin at 52, thinking it's going to 100. Because I can tell you right now, if it gets to 52, everybody will be talking 100 and will be selling. Now, let's go into the four hour chart of Bitcoin. We are going to dive into DeMarc and your requests. Basically, we talked about the 13 bottom yesterday and the signal from the DeMarc Smart Stochastic. So the rally happened, yay. Okay, next stop, four, uh, 45K. So if Bitcoin's above 42, 45 next. Bitcoin dominance. People have been asking for this on the stream. You know, well done. Very smart question. Bitcoin dominance could go up a lot. There is a downward sloping wedge in Bitcoin dominance. That can be a recipe for a rally without the technical analysis lecture, okay? So I don't see any reason why Bitcoin dominance can't go from 44 to 50, right? Why? Well, because we're in a new monetary order. That means Bitcoin. That means ETH. That could mean Solana, certain layer ones, Luna for stable coins, right? Don't want to be in Tether. Don't. Right. We have Tether in the title. Tether may own bank debt. Tether does own bank debt. It owns what's called commercial paper, short-term loans between banks. You got problems with Russian banks, European banks, and American banks, right? All you need is for something to happen there and the Justice Department or the SEC in the United States to come down on stable coins, right? In other words, the reason Bitcoin dominance could go up is because people may have to move out of stable coins and into Bitcoin. In other words, I understand Bitcoin is a risk asset. I understand you can lose 20% in Bitcoin in a week. I get it. It's not investment advice, but which would you rather own? A proof of work, decentralized currency, okay? Or a stable coin backed by things you can't see that the US government hates. I mean, I, I leave that up to you. This is one of the reasons why dominance can go up. Could you imagine if all the liquidity in Tether all of a sudden goes, oh shit, I got to buy Bitcoin? I got, I got to get out of Tether and into Bitcoin. And it's the quickest thing that people can do because, you know, it's a, it's a liquid big market as in Bitcoin. So stable coins versus Bitcoin, I say Bitcoin. ETH, same thing, right? Okay, not as impressive today, right? But ETH may catch up. ETH may be freaking out or at least stalled 
by the idea that the SEC may attack all of DeFi. I don't think they're going to attack all of DeFi. I think they're going to they're going to want say about stable coins. I don't know what that means, but I don't think they're going to kill DeFi. I think they're going to hurt stable coins. Right? So, if ETH is above 2607, it can go to 3000. Okay? Ethereum is still money. Okay? Ethereum on a 1-hour chart, so doing tactical Ethereum. If Ethereum goes above 2793, it can go to 3150. All right. I personally would like buy the dip or wait to see if the breakout happens. I think buying a dip may be smarter. And then if it takes out 2793, you can let it ride. Okay. Let's talk about other altcoin ideas. We can dive into the charts soon. Solana, our fundamental analyst thinks Solana potentially function as a payment network, a new monetary order, Solana destroyed by VC selling. Okay. The eight hour Solana chart shows that if Solana is okay, or at least stable eight hours from now, that Solana could take out 91 and eventually go to 104. So the Solana chart, because again, Solana hasn't done anything. It's basically where it was at the end of February, right? Solana has done nothing. So if there's anything good about Solana, okay, the market may trade that because the market has just ignored Solana and just let it just die. So now may be the time to pick up stuff that has a fundamental case, right? Because, you know, Solana up at five, six, 7%, who cares? You know how these things can move once they get going. Speaking of that, near protocol, right? Our fundamental guys bought it at eight. I'm not exactly sure what I said about it, I think there was some good DeMarc work, but the bottom line is near protocol. If you look at the Williams oscillator near protocol, may be just getting started. I mean, if near protocol takes out 12, 12, 17, you can make a case for much higher prices. Now I don't want to be a moon boy, right? But our fundamental analysts like near, okay. The Williams work is good. The DeMarc good work was good yesterday. And there's like an accumulation cone, which means near has been zooming around inside a confined space, which can be a recipe for a much bigger move. The exact same thing happened in CRB commodities index, right? Before this parabolic started, VeChain. VeChain has a positive look to it. Okay, Luna, too late for Luna, right? Well, maybe not. If Luna is above 97.10, if you can get involved in Luna between 100 and 101, right? Or maybe even get a dip to 97. Get a dip to 97. That was the old high. I'm showing Luna can go to 140. It's like a five wave up, right? It's like, oh my God, you know, everyone's like, I missed it. Okay, maybe you did. Maybe you just leave it. That's okay. But that doesn't mean that Luna could be winner take all in stable coins. In other words, UST versus Tether. No contest, not investment advice, but Luna could be winner take all in stable coins. Okay. Cosmos, you missed it, right? It's up 8% today. No, no Cosmos. What it's, it's been in a range. It hasn't done anything. If anything, Cosmos above 2971 is a good support point to lean on because if it takes out 3180, it's probably going to 40. So Cosmos, definitely something to look at. Now, Zcash, risk to the view. Oh. Every time Zcash, Litecoin, and Dash moon, the market turns around and goes down. So I definitely prefer Bitcoin to stable coins, not investment advice. I definitely think Bitcoin can have a, another leg up in the next, say, four days. Okay. Zcash has come out with some new functionality. And privacy may matter if there's a problem with stable coins. In a new monetary order, privacy may matter. It may, right? In other words, people haven't wanted to take risk with privacy coins, but now sanctions and, and threats of government regulation, like there's a certain sector of people in the crypto market that's like, oh, I have to go privacy. Okay. So Zcash above 138 would be a signal that this time is different. Yes, the four most dangerous words in the English language are 
this time is different, okay? Which is why you want to wait to see if Zcash can take out 138, okay? Avalanche, okay, has done nothing, has done nothing. Now, I don't know if the case for Avalanche has passed, but I do know there's good support at 77.20. So if 77.20 holds, you can make a case for 84 or 95 if we're going to have a one-week rip in crypto, okay? And that is the market update. All right. Tax is bummed about AVAX. I don't think you should get bummed about AVAX yet unless I'm about to go to my screen and AVAX, you know, dumped while I was talking. Okay, so let's let's look at AVAX. Let's do a little DeMarc AVAX so that Taz is not bummed. Let's check it out. Okay, I, I, I am definitely pulling the chart up now. Now, now, now. Now. Okay, let's go to AVAX. Okay, so it's like, here's the moment of truth, right? The moment of truth in Avalanche. So here's the dip back to 77.20, right? I mean, this is where, if, if it's going to be good, right? Buyers are going to show up here. Now let's go up here. Let's go to layer one, see what we got on AVAX and all the layer ones. Might as well start right there. Okay, there's chain link. We're going to do that in a second. All right, folks, this is the part of the show where we're sort of moving to the tactical part of it, right? In other words, you know, the overall view is that we're looking for the future of money right? The future of money is real. Now the question is, okay, what do we do about it? Okay. So here's AVAX. The market goes up, right? Everybody gets in and then they flush it. Now, if 77.10 holds, $77.10 holds, it's good. Okay. If it doesn't, then I don't know, give it a couple of hours. Right. I actually think it's good that everybody is all in a big hurry to sell the uptick. Right. Because, you know, there was an old high in Cosmos right around 76.53. So let them sell it. Let them sell it. All right. Let's sit over here and, and go back to chain link. So this is a 90 minute chart. This market's moving fast enough where you're actually justified in looking at both the 90 minute and the 240 minute four hour chart. So let's see what we get in chain link. All right. So chain link on a 90 minute chart, that's a top, right? That's the 13 and the nine. So not a surprise chain link is coming off. Support is probably at 13. Okay. Let's look at the four hour chart. All right, so the four hour chart, th there is support down at 1361. Now, I'm reading one, two, three, four, five. I have seen this in DeMarc work, right? So it's still on an upward trajectory. These counts can change, but if Chainlink doesn't totally fall out of bed enough to change the count, right? Then this is buy the dip territory. It's not a bull market until you can buy a dip and make money. Okay, in Chainlink, here was the last dip at the 13 bottom. Obviously, as you could see, at that point, Chainlink, Chainlink traded like total shit, right? And Chainlink right now is probably scaring everybody because it's coming off and we don't know if it's going to dip all the way back down to 1361 because the government's going to come after DeFi. But my attitude is if you can buy a dip, right, you can make money, right? Phantom. Okay. So here's the four hour chart in Phantom. All right. Everybody seems to be freaking out right now. So here's the 13 bottom. There's a lot of support here, right? Around 130. And the ultimate support is at 115. 
So let's go to the daily chart and let's see what Phantom is doing there. Okay, so everyone is selling the rally in Phantom, but it's still hanging around a support point from the old low back at the end of December. So could Phantom get killed? Yeah, it could go to $1.15, right? Is it a better idea to buy Phantom on a dip than sell Phantom into a hole? I would vote to buy Phantom on a dip because, you know, the U.S. government, I don't think, is going to try to kill DeFi. Now, if it does, everything's going down. But you can have small positions. You can have small positions, right? What is happening? What is wrong with small positions? Right? I say, I say, play this market from the long side until they prove you wrong. Now, Luna, okay? 97 was a key point in Luna. It went to 105. Now, here is a classic DeMarc setup, okay? So here's how DeMarc works. We talked about nines and 13s. It's probably confusing, right? 13 is a bigger top or a bottom signal. Nines, nine tops can either work one of two ways. They can be tops or bottom signals, particularly if the market's in range. If the market is trending, okay, it'll go one to nine. That's called the setup phase. Then there will be a counter trend move. Then the market will continue to trend from one to 13. So check this out. This is Luna daily, right? Daily, here's the 13 bottom. Here's the setup phase one through nine. There's the counter trend move into March 7th. And oh, look, it's taken off again. Okay. So if you look at the 240 minute chart of Luna, okay, again, so this is the four hour chart, right? Everybody is selling it in front of the DeMarc resistance at 106, and you may get a counter trend move. You may get a dip. It could be 97.10. That would be my guess, or you could get a different dip. Everybody's afraid to buy. When everyone's afraid to buy, buy. When no one's afraid to buy, sell. <laughs> that's how I would, seriously, that, that's how I would do it. Okay. ICP, a lot of ICP fans out there. Let's see what's going on on the four hour chart. Okay. So as we talked about yesterday, right? ICP, it goes up, right? but it, it doesn't have that punch. Now let's look at a, at a shorter term chart. Okay. So on a shorter term chart, again, it's still in this basing phase. Now it could be a head and shoulders bottom, and this could be a shoulder over here. Let's go to the daily chart just to see how this reversal looks. So again, you know, it, it just looks like everyone is selling upticks in this. It's going to require a fundamental catalyst, right? Now, if there is a fundamental catalyst, it can go to 20, right? But so far, you know, there's only certain coins that are going to benefit here, right? And this, of course, assumes I'm right. And this lasts more than one day. Okay. I got to go to a different chart system for Osmo. Okay, so Osmo up 8% as of this recording. All right, very, very difficult read here. What is interesting to me and I, I have seen this before. I call this the synthetics formation. So sometimes a coin will come out, it'll moon, and then it'll sit in a range. Okay. Now everything inside of this range, like everything in the month of February was not worth trading. But if Osmo is breaking out, okay, if it's breaking out, 
I would think it has to get above $11.42. In other words, show me some money on the Williams fractal analysis that you're going to get a move through $11.42. But this is not the worst looking chart. This actually is okay because it looks like it's consolidating. Now, if you understand the fundamental case for this and you think there's a case for much higher prices, then I, I, would I would classify it as a hold. Okay, let's see what's going on with the market. Oh my God, there's Rune up 20%. Let's look at the eight hour chart of Rune. So I guess every time I mention the word Rune, I have to say not investment advice because you know this project may or may not be able to execute from a technology point of view. Although I love this idea of cross-chain DeFi, all right? Red phone crypto turned us on to this. And I just think it's interesting from a technical analysis point of view, again, not investment advice. Now on this idea of, you know, it's a bull market if you can buy a dip, okay? Right now, if you look a couple hours from now and Rune is still moving higher or Rune is stable, Okay, stable enough at the higher end of the range to keep this Williams oscillator, which I know is really hard to see, right? If that continues to move higher, Rune can do better. Rune is on top of support at 477. Okay, if that holds, 545 is next. And if the market really moons, 6.7 is possible. So I don't want to be a moon boy, but what I do want to do is buy support and support is a little bit of a hidden trick with the market up now. All right, let's see what else we got going on in the chat. Okay, what does Rune do that Cosmos doesn't? Hey, that's a good question. Probably a better one for our fundamental analysts. Okay. Um, I, I think Rune is just a DeFi protocol, whereas Cosmos is layer zero. So think of it as operational polka dot and I believe Luna is also connected to the Cosmos ecosystem. Also, our fundamental analysts, which of course you can get access to where? With the tokenmetrics.com subscription, have fully explained Cosmos and that ecosystem. So there's a lot of airdrops involved. You know, it's not easy peasy, but you know, Cosmos is operational interoperability. Okay, let's check out Spell. Let me get that in as many places as I can. Okay. So obviously this has gotten hammered. It's tough to actually figure out how to get it on the screen. All right. So here's what I would tell you about spell. Spell is very far away from its Williams moving averages. Okay. So there's like the midpoint of the red and the blue line. And here are some reversal candlesticks or some stalemate candlesticks in Spell. Okay. Now, if Spell can start moving up, right, to where this Williams oscillator starts getting more positive or less negative, then spell could be an okay long play. In other words, if, if, if I looked at this and I was like, all right, spell token, like it or not like it, you have to pick one, I would pick like it, right? In other words, buying destroyed stuff that could have a story, right? In other words, if you can't shoot your shot now, when are you going to shoot your shot? Okay, go back to that book about Mr. Putin, right? He's not effing around, right? Stock market, banks, you know, that's not the trade today, but that will be the trade at some point, like sell in May and go away, right? Or Mr. Putin's going to send the United States a birthday present on July 4th, okay? He does like to do stuff like that, okay? So if you're going to make money, let's make money now, all right? Let's check out what else we got going on. Okay, Steven says, you know, Spell has not treated me very well, right? I, I definitely understand that, 
All right. All right. So people are helping him out. Uh, King wants some love, sending you love. Okay. And, and he's looking for work on Algorand. So let's, let's take a shot at Algorand here. So let's see what we got on the DeMarc work. All right. So on the daily chart, the good news is Algorand's getting close to that nine bottom. You have the 13 bottom over here. And it's getting close to a nine bottom. Now, I think when it comes to layer ones, this is where you're really going to have to kind of know your stuff. This is where I would call our fundamental analysts. So you can tell the difference between one layer one and the other, right? I mean, it's obvious in Algorand that venture capitalists are long at a dollar, right? Because every time this thing tries to go to say 90 cents, that's this level up here. You get the 13 top and they just sell it, right? Support in Algorand is at 74 cents. Let's go to a 90 minute chart because I want to give you the best read possible. So again, 77 cents, 70.774, everyone's selling it. All right. Now that's the bad news. The good news is if somebody comes in and buys it, in an environment where normally everyone's selling it, if this thing takes out, you know, 0.774, right? This whole base down here, this is a concept I want to introduce people to in select altcoins. Remember how I was saying, yeah, it's in a range, but people have to be willing to pay higher prices. But if we're in a new monetary order, right? Stuff that no one likes, stuff that has base. The longer it base, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. So I don't want to be a stupid ass moon boy, but I do want to introduce you to the fact that if you can buy a dip and it turns around and Bitcoin goes to 52, right? Or, or there's a problem with Tether. In other words, what is your strategy regarding stable coins? Where do you want to allocate money to? Do you want to do it towards cheap layer ones, Bitcoin, right? I, I just think holding stable coins doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's either you put the money in actual dollars or actual fiat or you hold crypto, right? Maybe with the exception of the Luna ecosystem, not investment advice, right? So we're going to see if people want to get out of stable coins, right? And into crypto. Right. It's a weird world, right? <laughs> you know, the dollar is not a safe haven. Bitcoin is safer than tether, not investment advice. It's weird, right? But you can make money on weird, right? I mean, wheat, wheat, nickel, right? Oil. Who would have thought, right? You got to use your imagination here. Okay. Mateo is saying Rune has native Bitcoin staking. Aiken is like when alt season. Okay. Um, I think this is Bitcoin season, right? I think Bitcoin leads the market because Bitcoin is the most recognizable form of money. Other altcoins and layer ones can follow. Okay. Alt season requ requires the return of speculation. You could get alt season if all of a sudden Mr. Putin changes his mind or the Ukrainians just flat out surrender and give up. That's also a possibility. But even if that happens, right, I think Mr. Putin is going to continue to press the military advantage, right? He's just going to do it in a different way. Right? Mr. Putin is not at war with Ukraine. He's at war with the United States. Don't believe me? Read the book. This is why I want you to stay away from ridiculous speculative assets, right? The idea of I'm going to buy something on Monday, sell it on Friday and buy a Lambo on Saturday. Yeah, that's over. If you're going to do that kind of investing, you're going to need to find the small projects and hold them long-term. That's a little hint for you. We just got off our strategy call with our premium customers and that's what we told them. So that's a, 
That's a nugget for free right there. Okay. All right. Aruna says alt season until June. We definitely respect uh, different views here. Okay. Steve is like, watch BTC dominance for alt season. So I covered Bitcoin dominance earlier. It's currently trading at 44. Now, since I work for an altcoin firm, I'm not going to get upset if I'm wrong about alt season, right? I think it's Bitcoin season. That doesn't mean you can't make money in layer ones. Okay, VeChain we covered earlier, but I will. I am happy to look at VeChain on the DeMarc work to see what's going on. In other words, that theory that I developed from the Williams work on VeChain, you know, does it have merit? Should you do it? Okay, so this is the 90-minute chart. <clears throat> V-Chain goes to resistance and comes off. So the question is, question is, okay, <clears throat> is it worth it? Is it profitable to buy the dip in V-Chain? Now, I think it's interesting that an Asian supply chain company, given the sanctions, could wake up. You may have to wait three more days based on this. So you may have three more days of dip or sideways. Okay. I think you should be thinking about long entry in V chain. Now, if you're wrong, then you're going to go down to three and a half cents. So as usual in all coins, if you're wrong, you're going to get hosed, but I don't mind trying V chain. Okay. The other reason I don't mind trying V chain, see if I can pull this off. This is, this is not, this is not as easy as trading view to draw lines. Okay. There's one line. This could be a downward sloping wedge in V chain. I mean, it could also be a bearish channel and it could wind up at three and a half cents, but V chain is in this downward sloping mode where, you know, they've been pressing it down, pressing it down, pressing it down. And if it can actually pop back up, could really catch bears off guard. Now, if I'm wrong, I'll lose money. Okay. So I'm inclined to be more positive on V chain, but I'm more inclined to try to buy dips and make it prove itself. Okay. Helium. By the way, folks, how are we doing on that like button? I think I got up to 568 on yesterday's video in total. It'd be awesome if everybody who's on the stream today would hit the like button. So this is helium on the daily, you know, looks like it's three days away from a bottom here. People keep selling it on the way up. All right. So there's your 13 bottom on the four hour chart and a very uninspiring rally. So I would say at 2101 could be a point of interest, but again, you know, V chain is in this like basing formation where you could have some sort of head and shoulders bottom forming. It may take a couple of days, right? So I don't want to pay 23 for helium, but if they smack it back down to 21, or if the dip only lasts a couple of hours, you know, maybe this is one of these things where Bitcoin goes up, right? Rockets up overnight comes off because there is going to be no ceasefire. But then we get the test of the new monetary order. It's not a new monetary order unless you can buy crypto on a dip. If you can buy crypto on a dip and make money, okay, then, you know, it's real deal. Now, somebody's going to ask for Polkadot, so I might as well cover that. Polkadot on a four-hour chart, you know, Polkadot's done better than you would have thought, right? All right. Got the 13 bottom and it actually went up. We've been talking about interoperability, okay? Like Cosmos to me, it looks like it's going to go to 40, all right? Polkadot got back above a big support point, a big, a big pivot point, I should say, at 1712. So if there's anybody out there into Polkadot, there may be a case to start buying dips in Polkadot leaning on that 1712 support level. Okay. All right. We're getting some people looking to smash the like button. Some guys want to do crypto and play golf. Uh, what I would say about that is that it's not good to like, to, I'm sorry, to watch the market every single day, all day. Okay. 
NFT Burn Wallet gave me a like. I appreciate that. Okay. And Alan Carnation or Alan Cantation likes to stream every day. And I appreciate that. All right. Let's look at Flux. Now, one thing you may be noticing going back to the joke I was making at the beginning is that you're noticing that not all these charts, they don't all look the same. Jokes aside, they don't. Okay, so Flux, again, if Flux holds and turns around and goes higher, this DeMarc work shows that there could be four more up blocks in Flux. So if you want to dare to dream here, Okay, this could have bump and run written all over it. Okay, maybe around 136. So, you know, this is this is not the best trend line drawing tool. Okay, it's not like trading view, but somewhere in the area where it is now, these altcoins are going to make a decision. Can you buy the dip? The market's going to tell you. Market's going to tell you. All right. King wants to know, has everyone given up on Matic? Okay. I would say, well, if the answer to that's yes, then Matic would be a buy, not investment advice. Okay. So Matic had the 13 bottom at 138. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Okay. And I, I think this is going to be somewhat revealing. So here's Matic and, uh, you know, everyone loved it at three and now no one wants it at a dollar 50. I'm thinking you got two or three more days of this kind of price action where altcoins may go sideways to lower and continue to dip. Right. I mean, it makes sense, right? Crypto's up like 10, 15% today. I think the only two coins that can actually just totally moon from where they are right now not investment advice is Luna, Cosmos, and Near. Everything else may have to wait a couple of days, right? And you had to wait over here with Matic, right? This nine bottom came in, and then you had to wait a week before it popped, right? I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I actually think that you could be looking at some kind of long-term bottom here, okay? So if you're connecting these peaks roughly, okay, there's a lot of support in Matic. So like dips are meant to be bought in stuff like layer two. Like let's assume the SEC doesn't completely get rid of DeFi. Layer twos are going to be really important for the next level of DeFi. Okay. Seriously. Um, if the market continues to go lower, you'll see real money give up on Matic under a dollar. That's just one scenario. Okay. All right. All right. Let's just make sure we cover the stuff that everyone likes. Here's Solana. So there's the 240, there's the four hour chart. So there's the resistance at 89. Okay. I talked about liking this. Let's see if there's a reason on the daily chart to validate what I was looking at on the other charts. Okay. Cause Solana has been hammered. So the Solana daily chart is the same thing sort of sitting around waiting for the turn. Okay, let's just take a look at that DeMarc oscillator, the smart oscillator or the smart stochastic, which actually, it actually did us well, right? Did us right. Okay, so no signal there for Solana. Let's take a look at the 90 minute chart to see if there's anything going on there. Because I'm telling you right now, I am interested in this. I mean, there was a point where Kraken's research team, right or wrong, they thought Solana was going to 600. So I know that VCs have done nothing but sell it. But, you know, like if you look at a short-term chart of Solana, if Solana can get itself back above 87 and a half, you know, it's not a bull market until you can buy a dip. So if the market shows you that people who bought the dip make money, Okay, then that is a signal. That's go time. All right. 
Okay, folks, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that, okay? Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for today. I, I appreciate everybody. Uh, I appreciate everyone out there, okay? I, I'm going to do XRP for an encore because I know people just can't get enough of XRP. All right, so XRP did get above resistance at $74, except $75 and 75 cents and change. Okay. Uh, your screen is not got the nine top, shared. And now it's with, oh, my sheen is not shared. So I'm stumbling and my screen is not shared. All right, there we go. Okay, so uh, XRP goes up to, 77 cents and fails. So is it better to buy support or buy resistance? It's better to buy support. Now, if XRP turns around, holds say 75 and a half cents and then breaks out, okay, that's great. But this rally can be a chance to sort of exit things that won't work. Now, again, I understand if XRP wins a court case and XRP is like a payment system that allows money to move around rapidly and the government's going to come down on stable coins, I get the case for XRP. So if this nine top produces a counter trend move, right? XRP over the next 48 hours is definitely worth studying. It is, right? I don't think you want to FOMO in that resistance because that when does that work? That's never worked. That, that hasn't worked going all the way back to February 25th, right? This is the 90-minute chart. So every time it gets up here, it stops, right? And they actually tried to break it out in early March. So let's just finish up with a daily chart of XRP just to see where that is. All right, so as we discussed, if XRP can break out above 79 cents, that would be bullish. But notice in here, there's, there's like really no DeMarc work preventing XRP from doing anything one way or the other. So a break above 79 cents could be bull time for XRP because it would have cleared all of this resistance. So if there are moon boys out there at XRP, honestly, honestly, They've got more of an argument now than they ever have. It's at resistance, but there's a reason it's at resistance. Because all it takes is for them to win the court case, and then suddenly there's a huge use case for the coin. All right, folks, that's it. Okay, new monetary order, Bitcoin. Think about Bitcoin because it's better than stable coins. It's better than the dollar. It's better than the ruble. It's better than the euro et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's not a bull market unless you can buy a dip and make money. So let's think about where you want to grab your coin of choice on a dip with a stop and proper risk management. All right. So that's it for today, right? <clears throat> Pauline, Mateo, Jojo, appreciate your honesty. Okay. All right. Steve J says, stay away from, you know, not so good coins. Bitcoin is king. Appreciate that. Aiken is giving love to the token metrics team, right? Jojo likes to GAN work on my Twitter. I also appreciate that. All right, folks, we will see you next time. This is Bill Noble. I'll see you tomorrow.